left you, little boy. It was just terrible. Ooh, yikes. I don't know, Leanne. Mm -mm -mm. Them short boys be real funny about their height, man. Uh, mm. You could have said anything, girl. You could have said your shoes was leaning. You could have said uh, one of your fingers is missing. Anything. But when a man is height challenged, you don't want to go there. Hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment respectfully. And if you are not already a part of this book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's move on to our next book. I decided to move forward in time to the 90s. This is I Regret the Day I Lost My Virginity. You Are Not Your Past. By SWV's Leanne Lily Lyons. One thing about New York, honey, nobody fights fair. You're going to either get shanked, stabbed, or jumped by a gang of chicks. This story wasn't any different for me. Another incident was when I walked to my godmother Jed's house from where my mother lived on 174th Street in Grand Concourse. One thing about New Yorkers, we do way more walking than driving. And those who have a car, they weren't driving it or didn't have no damn insurance bags. That must be an up north thing because D.C. is a very, very walkable city. And metro is very accessible. Now, I don't know about the metro now. I don't think I get on that Wamada now. Back then, there was no need for a car because you could walk. As a matter right. of fact, that time that I went to New York with one of my coworkers to see an outdoor concert, we walked the majority of the way. I had to tell her, wait a minute, pause. This is too much walking for me. I can't do all that. I used to could when I was a teenager. I can't do that shit no more. One thing about New Yorkers, we do way more walking than driving. And those who have a car, they weren't driving it or didn't have no damn insurance. In my case, I was too young to have a car. And at that time, if I was of age, I probably couldn't afford one anyway. So walking was our thing. Still kind of like an Omar, I would purposefully walk past his block hoping he and his brothers would be outside so he could see how cute I looked. Sometimes I was successful, other times I wasn't. But this particular day, no one was outside, so I kept going. As I passed this park on Summit Avenue, there were a few guys hanging out playing ball. Don't you love walking past the basketball courts when you were young? Oh my goodness, that remind me of the Goodman League we have back home around there by Berry Farm. Sometimes I was successful, other times I wasn't. But this particular day, no one was outside, so I kept going. As I passed this park on Summit Avenue, there were a few guys hanging out playing ball. So as I walked past the basketball court, a few guys were whistling at me. Initially, I ignored it because I'm not a damn dog. And even back then, I didn't respond to boys whistling at me. I could hear the guys whispering about who was going to approach me. Lo and behold, as I kept walking, the shortest one out the crew thought he'd take his shot. He was a half cute dude, just short as hell. He caught up with me, giving me a few feet, asking me my name. 
I told him, you're a cutie. Can I call you sometimes? He said, I politely said no. Why? He said, no offense, but you're way too short for me. And what you don't want to do is tell a young short boy that he's short. Because the next thing you know, they attacking you like the Fortnite. You're a cutie. Can I call you sometimes? He said, I politely said no. Why? He said, no offense, but you're way too short for me. You're a cutie, but just too short. If looks could kill, that little black ninja turned red in the face. Suddenly, I wasn't the cute girl anymore, and he damn sure didn't want my number now. As his friends witnessed his rejection, he started to get real pissed off and insult me. F you, bitch, he said. I didn't want your whack ass anyway. I just wanted to F you. I looked at him and said, get your gorilla looking ass out my face. F you, little boy. It was just terrible. Ooh, yikes. I don't know, Leanne. Mm -mm -mm. Them short boys be real funny about their height, man. Uh, uh, you could have said anything, girl. You could have said your shoes was leaning. You could have said, you know, you got too many bumps on your face. You could have said uh, one of your fingers is missing. Anything but when a man is height challenged, you don't want to go there. You don't. Ooh, that's like ripping off his pickles. I looked at him and said, get your gorilla looking ass out my face. Fuck you, little boy. It was just terrible. It got so bad that people started to come outside, look out their windows and everything. It even brought some of his family members outside who then started their own beef with me. As I got closer to my godmother's house, I started to see people I knew, so he kind of fell back. Then his sister, who was just as short, but had a big ass mouth said, I'm going to F you up, B. Fucking with my brother. B, you can get it too, I said. Some people I knew and some of my sister friends asked me what was wrong. And I told them, they said, leave that shit alone. And I did. Pause. Let me respect the fact that Lee Ann looked like out of all them sister with, sisters with voices, she'd be the one to put that work in. That goddamn Leanne got hanged. That Coco look like she ain't got time for that. You might accidentally chop me in my throat. And I ain't got time to leave, lose this voice. Okay, for nobody. Uh, what's her name? Taj? I don't know about her. She just don't look like she, you know, want to fight nobody. She look like she, like the peacemaker. Like, I don't, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. She don't look like that kind of girl. But that goddamn Leanne look like she put that works in. I respect you. Some people I knew and some of my sister friends asked me what was wrong and I told them. They said, leave that shiz alone and I did. I had gotten to my destination and started doing other shiz. About an hour later, someone that knew me and the guy that started with me heard about the confrontation and said they were heated. I'm like, for what? He started with me first and then his sister got in it. I'm starting to believe the rejection in front of his friends got the best of him and he couldn't deal with it. Anyhow, my friend said the guy's sister wanted a one-on-one -on -one with me. I said, F it. Cool. They call that on the West Coast a fair one. Give me a fair one. Meaning no jumping. At this point, my adrenaline was on 10. I was so sick of him and his damned sister. This dude had initiated a fight between his sister and I. And it was to take place that evening on their block. Girl, are you crazy? This was the dumbest thing ever to me. They were arranging a fight as if we were getting paid for it or something. But what the hell? We were all very immature, 12 and 13 year olds. Damn. I was playing with Barbie at 12. I ain't had no time to be fighting no bitches over no ninjas. So the time came for us to go to the dude's block and it was almost dark outside. So pause, this is saying a lot. She 12, 13 years old and it's getting dark. Um, I don't know what time of year this is. Oh, Fall, fun. winter, it's getting dark about five, four or five. And in the summertime, it could be like eight or nine. 
okay, or 930, something like that. And that's telling me a lot that it's getting dark outside and she's allowed to maneuver outside. Now, y'all know I grew up hood adjacent. So there were times that my mama would let me stay out past nighttime, but it was only because I was across the way on the other side of Morton and my aunt and my cousins lived over there. So if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be outside after dark. So that's telling me that Leanne, uh, maybe she was doing a lot of raising of herself, herself. Now, don't let my commentary fool you because yeah, at 12 years old, I was doing childish things, but by 13, I was feeling myself. You hear me? I started liking boys and I started wanting to do things that would put me in positions to be closer to the little boys. So even though at 13, 14, I was in the house by a certain time or across the way, 640 in the project, I didn't start showing my ass until 15 which is still very young so the time came for us to go to the dude's block and it was almost dark outside i can't front i was nervous as hell because for one i had no idea what would be waiting on the other side and two we were dumb as hell for agreeing to fight someone on their block as young people say that part as me jen and about remember jen is her cousin that be about that work as me, Jen, and about 25 to 30 people from my block approached Merriam Avenue, it looked like a straight up war zone. They came to kick our asses. Surrounding them were pit bulls, sticks, thugs, and the girls they had were huge man looking chicks. Of course, me and Jennifer was leading the pack. And when we saw what was going down, we made it clear that it was going to be a one-on-one -on -one fight between the girl and I. No jumping. No jumping, one of the dudes from my block said. I'm nervous as hell. My body all of a sudden felt limp, but my adrenaline was at 100. I was an emotional wreck for real. All I could think of was how I was going to get the best of this bitch and come out alive. That's too much pressure for somebody that's 12 or 13 years old. As we got closer, I could hear the guy Sean say, that's the B right there. As I looked, I'm like, whoa, this is not even the girl I was there to fight. They got some other chick to fight me. Oh, well, no time to pussy around now. I wanted to get this thing over, so that spread out. And the bitch came out of nowhere, swung on me and missed. She was short, too. So her reach was very weak, but mine's wasn't. When she missed me and I caught her, all I know is I see this big man looking chick come towards me and swing. My block telling me to kick her ass all the while Jennifer was swinging on any and everybody because at this time, everybody realized I was getting jumped. It started off as 25 and 30 people ended up being only four of us. All them pretty bitches talking all that shit on my block was gone. It was said to me that when they saw I was getting jumped and everybody was swinging, they left. <laughs> the cops were called and the fight was over. Suddenly, everything on the opponent's end calmed down. They spread out and left one by one, dog by dog. In the end, it was only me and Jennifer left to fend for ourselves. And like always, we ended up doing just that. Hmm. Speaks volumes to me. Music didn't only save my life, but it made my life. Ever since I could remember, the gift of song was in my belly. My mom tried putting me in so many things, but the music was always a hit with me. In the beginning of the book, she talked about her sisters. She said, many don't know that she also has a brother that lives down south. Her sisters, uh, although they were talented, they weren't like Lily. Her brother was. I had a connection with him that I didn't have with my sisters, and that was musical. My brother 
can show enough sing. When I think of my brother's singing voice, I'm quickly reminded of Sam Cooke. I always enjoyed when he sang R&B songs on the radio, but when he sang those quartet style gospel songs, he had my full attention. My Aunt Regina's husband, Uncle Bobby, was very influential musically in my life. He played the electric guitar and would always take time showing me different chords to play. He was also a singer in his own right. When it came to tone, my other godmother, Janella Hall, singer, Erin Hall's mother taught me all about it. Wait a minute, pause. Do that lady know that her fucking son is crazy? Do she know that he is mental and he is round here taking advantage of girls and he is 72 years old? No, he ain't. He probably the same age as me. Hunching around on the floor, wiggling around like he still, you know, got that ocean motion girl. And we all know you taking that Superman pill, Erin Hall. We all know it. It came to tone my other godmother, Janella. Hall, singer Aaron Hall's mother taught me all about it. When I tell you her little self had the most beautiful tone ever, please believe me. Okay. Speaking of tone, we have this dude named Weensy who sings with Backyard Band. He has the most unique voice ever. And it's not like one of those Luther Vandross voices or... Um, Sam Cook voices. It's just his tone. Oh, no. 